you guys doing a natural or medicated IVF transfer cycle? Are you prepared for possible multiples? This is such a loaded question. <laughs> I think why unsolicited advice bothers me so much is that did we genetically test our embryos and why or why not? And hello everybody, it is Dingle here and welcome, welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing super, super duper well. I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but the fall lighting right now is so iconic outside. I'm still a summer gal, but I do have to appreciate the golden afternoon light that is going on outside. But anyways, my friends, if you are new to this channel and you're just stumbling across this video, hello, my name is Mac. My husband's name is Jack. Yes, Mac and Jack. And we are currently in in a now between two and a half to three year infertility journey. And we just finished up our second IVF retrieval round. And at the end of our first one, we did a wrap up Q and A for anything anyone was wondering. And I absolutely loved it. And I thought it was such a great discussion as well. So I wanted to do another one for the end of this one to tie a bow on this round. We have documented basically every single step of this journey from IUIs to doctor's appointments, to the retrieval, to IVF we have like literally everything. So if you're new and you want to binge those videos, I will leave the full infertility journey playlist linked down below. I asked you all on my Instagram to send me questions of anything you guys have been wondering and you guys did not disappoint. But if you wanna be part of these in the future, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Why didn't your doctor recommend starting with fertility meds slash monitoring cycles before IUI? So if you're new, we tried over a year naturally and especially with COVID. I don't know if YouTube lets me say that anymore. All of the appointments for the fertility clinic and any sort of doctor's appointments were super booked out. So by the time we got to the fertility clinic, it had been a year and a half or maybe even over a year and a half. But when we initially went into that appointment, we did indeed talk about medicated cycles and IUI is kind of the next step or we could jump right into IUI. And honestly, at that point, we had been trying for far too long. <laughs> in, our, in our eyes, we were done and the IUIs were medicated cycles with IUIs. So we would be doing medicated cycles with IUIs and then the next IUI, the second one, we introduced monitoring on that one. But it was an option to just do medicated cycles first. I just didn't want to. <laughs> are you guys doing a natural or medicated IVF transfer cycle? We are doing a medicated IVF transfer cycle. If we're gonna go for it, we're gonna go for it. We are approaching now three years, like I said before, of trying and just going through literally everything possible to get our baby. And now that I know how I feel on the vast majority of the medications, I'm prepared, I'm not afraid of them, I'm not looking forward to them, but I'm okay. I'm, I would rather do medicated cycles versus non-medicated just for that extra assurance that my body is getting prepped and ready to hold a baby. In a perfect world, how many children would you like? So I think my answer is still the same on this. I don't know how to describe it, but I just, for some reason in my gut, know that I'm gonna have four kids. That might not be real, honestly. That could very much not be the case at all. And it's not that I have a yearning desire to have four children. It's just that I think that that's what's gonna be. It's just that I think that that is going to be our family. I don't know how to describe it. It's the same feeling that I had when Jack and I started getting serious and I could picture a life with him. I, for some freaking reason, knew that I was going to struggle getting pregnant. I didn't know for sure. I just had this weird thought and feeling that Jack and I would struggle. And there's no one in my immediate family that has dealt with infertility except for one aunt on one side of my family, but nobody else. And on Jack's side of the family, he's one of eight kids. So his immediate family did not struggle at all either. So there wasn't anything that was pointing to that. I just knew. I don't know how I knew, I just did. And it feels the same when I think about the number of kids being four. If you could give advice to someone just starting IVF, what would it be? Holy freaking Hannah. So many things, like if I think about it granularly, is that how you say the word? I don't know. But if I think about it in like a microscopic level, there's all of these different things that I would love to pass on to people. And I hope that by documenting our journey, you guys can pick up anything that has been helpful for 
for you to pick up along the way. That's my hope anyway, but if I could just look at it from this point of view, I think it would be to just take everything one step at a time. The most overwhelming moments along the way have been when I am just looking at everything big picture and trying to take in all of the information when I was only at like this step but I wanted to take in all the information of all of the steps and that is debilitating for anybody and I've always just felt my best when I stay present I just keep on trucking I do this step and then this step and then this step and it always feels just less and less overwhelming when I look at it like that and it also helps keep my thoughts of the what ifs and what if this doesn't work out and what if we do this all for nothing Thing and all of this stuff because that stuff is over here and I am here. So just keeping present, keeping in the moment and keeping at your current step and what you have to worry about right now. That is probably the biggest piece of advice that I would give. This is so funny. I need to answer this. I'm new, but what is your name? I thought it was Mac, but I swore the doctor called you June. So it's confusing, but it's super simple. But I understand why people would get confused because when our parents were naming us, they knew that they wanted us to go by our middle names. I have no reason beyond that's just what they wanted to do so that's awesome so when they were picking the names they picked the names according to that so my middle name is Mackenzie and I go by Mac but my first name is June and that is after my grandmother so it's June Mackenzie Dingle but I go by Mac and then my brothers also do the same thing the middle brother his name is Robert Samuel but he goes by Sam and then our youngest brother is Jason Gabriel but he goes by Gabe so my name is June but it's also Mac but you can also call me Dingle <laughs> throughout your eye IUI and IVF, have you been taking vitamins or just sticking to folic acid? I personally have just stuck to folic acid, but after reading the um, book, it starts with the egg, I think that's what it's called. When it is time for us for a second child, I 1000% will at least give that regimen a shot. I have heard miracle stories about it and such encouraging stories with unexplained infertility or low ovarian reserve and this book has changed their lives. The only reason we didn't do that before heading into IVF is because I read the book a little too late. I read through the whole thing, I got educated, I highlighted the regimen that we would like to be on, but because our eggs are kind of like in hiding before they come to the surface, that whole process takes about three months and all of the supplements and the vitamins take that three months in order for us to see an increase in egg count or quality, etc. All of these things that these vitamins can do. But while I read the book, I think I had one month to our IVF cycle, but stay tuned for that second baby. Stick around because I would love to try that regimen before heading into a IVF transfer cycle. Are you prepared for possible multiples? This is such a loaded question. <laughs> I think mentally I know that it's a possibility. Am I ever gonna be prepared for the moment where the tech says it's twins? I don't think anyone could be prepared for that. Am I particularly particularly hoping for twins no, I, I personally am not. One healthy baby would be amazing. There's a lot of complications that do come with twins as far as pregnancy goes. And also just a lot of life complications after, whether it's financially and personally and everything when there's two newborn babies. And we've never even cared for one newborn baby. There would just be a lot going on with it. So I can't say I'm hoping for that, but I will take anything at this point. Truly. If it ends up being twins, I don't want anyone to look back at this answer being like, you didn't want that second one. Like that's obviously not the case. There are a few messages that just said that they didn't have any questions, but just like wishing us well and how much they are supporting us. And I just, I appreciate you guys. I love you all. Best way for friends to support a friend going through IVF. I feel like the best way to support an individual going through IVF depends on their personal personality, if that makes sense. For example, I am someone that if my friends just check in once in a while and don't put pressure on me to give them updates or to talk for hours on end if I'm just like really not up for it, just letting me know that they're there and they're thinking of me. I love getting those messages 
messages because there's just no pressure attached to them. But honestly, if you know somebody close to you that's going through IVF, there is no harm asking them how they can best support them because they might like to have a phone call once a month for a couple hours or so just to unload or chat about something that's not IVF related or grab coffee or whatever. And by asking them and opening the door up for them to answer that, you'll get exactly how you can support them without questioning whether it's how they want to be supported and they'll also get the support that they really need at that time. To piggyback off of that question though, I'm gonna take the opportunity to say this. I feel like it should be unsaid, which is really sad because it's just, you, it's not unsaid, but the least helpful thing that you can do for a friend that is going through something, anything that you are just not familiar with, or if you are familiar with it even, it's either way, offering advice, whether it's from your own experience and projecting that advice onto somebody else, or you've never personally gone through something like that, but you've heard of a cousin who also went through something like that and they did this one thing and now they're pregnant and offering that up is so unhelpful. It's so unhelpful. I've had a lot of time and a lot of experience now <laughs> dealing with unsolicited advice, even from people who I know love me and I know are simply trying to help in any way they can and have zero malicious intent. But for me personally, and I don't know if this is the same with everyone, so leave it in the comments below if you resonate with what I'm about to say. But I think why it bothers me so much, I think why unsolicited advice bothers me so much is that honestly, it's simply insulting. I myself have been going through this for going on three years now. So do you think that I don't know all of the different things that could help or all of the different things that have helped for other women or all of the different possibilities that clinics can do. And I think when somebody comes with, have you tried this? Or, you know, I've, I'm, I tried this and my cousin got pregnant with this. It's insulting that you would think that I wouldn't personally know or haven't considered it and already decided that it's not for me right now. Versus having a open dialogue conversation and sharing experiences without adding a should to that experience, if that makes sense. If I dig deep down, that is the reason why I think I cringe whenever I hear like, have you tried this? My cousin tried this, blah, 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 blah. One, it's just a lot of pressure and it's just overwhelming, but two, I find it a little insulting. I don't know if that makes any sense, but let me know. Do you regret not starting your TTC journey sooner? P.S. I love you guys. I love you too. I think hindsight obviously is always 2020 because if we had started trying earlier, would we have gotten to this point earlier? I think yes, but we had no idea what kinds of things we would run into and we weren't ready for a child earlier than when we started. So in that way, I don't regret it. But with the perspective now, obviously I wish we found our clinic sooner. I wish we did that, but we would have no way of knowing. And if we got pregnant sooner than when we were ready, that would have opened up a whole other can of worms. And I, we just weren't ready. However, do I wish that I pushed my OB to look into things and to pull labs sooner than she did because we were waiting for that standard 12 month mark. Absolutely. There was a voice in the back of my head leaving my first appointment with her when we were discussing how I've been trying for seven months now, etc. And she said, at 12 months, give her a call. And I just remember in the back of my mind having an inkling to ask for the labs, but I didn't know what those labs were, to be honest. And I didn't have any experience in this, to be honest. And I hadn't been following any anyone else in the fertility or infertility space to have that reference. So I just kind of went along with what she said and I don't blame her for it because there is that 12 month mark that insurance likes to see and that's just kind of the standard, at least here in the US. But if you have that inkling also, I just so encourage you just listen to your voice. If you don't, that's amazing. Try until 12 months. But if you just want to know, if you want reassurance and you are informed of how much the labs will cost, et cetera, oh, I would have done it right then and there because because then we would have caught our FSH level and that ultimately is what gave me a referral to our fertility clinic and I could have saved, what is that, five months? I'm bad at math, but five months more of trying and five months less 
of being in the clinic. You know, how do you stay positive? I am struggling. Well, I am giving you the biggest virtual hug right now. I feel like nobody knows the struggle until you've gone through it of just wanting something. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I'm, <laughs> I did my makeup for this. We are not crying right now. But I actually got a couple questions about how I stay so positive during this experience. And I do have to be honest, those questions shocked me. <laughs> because I honestly don't perceive myself that way as positive. I think I like to joke a lot and I think Jack and I have a very dark sense of humor. <laughs> and we are able to joke when things are super tough or when I'm anxious, etc. So that might be a form of positivity, I guess. But you guys have seen me completely break down on really hard days and completely lose sight in the goal and become incredibly anxious about things that my anxiety is clinging to. And so I share that or I give that perspective because I don't want you all to see me and be like, wow, how is she so happy? How is she keeping herself together through all of this when I'm literally disintegrating into a puddle of tears? Like I do too, I do that too. And I feel like you should never, ever, ever going through infertility, put pressure on yourself to see the good in every single situation because to be honest y'all and I think we can agree with this this sucks this this sucks <laughs> I, I don't want anyone to go through this but something I can offer and something that we have actively tried to do throughout this whole process is one feel all the feelings including the negative stuff including the anxiety like letting it wash over us instead of ignoring it or feeling guilt about it because before this I was not very in tune with my emotions before this I was not super reflective on them I would push them away but being able to feel them fully has been such a learning moment in itself but with feeling all the emotions we also made a point to celebrate every good thing that happens along this journey because I feel like those good things can always be swallowed up by all of the negative things or the what ifs of the next step and the anxiety of the next step and all of these decisions and everything like that right but in those moments in those moments when you got 10 eggs instead of four for your second retrieval. I need you to sit in those because you, <laughs> because you don't know when you're gonna get a next good thing. And ironically, that sounds very negative, but in a process that just doesn't have a ton of good in it, it's so important to recognize those amazing moments. Because by doing that, I look back at my IVF cycles and I remember those incredible moments and those jaw-dropping moments and just those feelings of utter hope and bliss. And that's what I remember from the IVF cycles instead of, oh man, only six fertilized instead of eight, or we only got this many instead of this many. There is always going to be negative parts of any situation, but there's also going to be positive ones. And sometimes the negative ones will outnumber the positive, but we have so much power within our minds to make those smaller in quantity, in quantity, smaller in quantity, happy moments seem so much bigger than those negative moments. I hope, I hope that made sense and I hope it helped. <laughs> How are slash were you able to mentally separate the fertility journey from your daily life? That is such a struggle because I feel like whether you're trying naturally for a while or you're in the medicated cycle phase or the IUI phase or moving on to IVF, there's always that lingering thing in the back of your mind reminding you that you are having trouble starting your family. But the times where I feel like it has consumed my entire life versus having a good balance are the times when we just had nothing going on in our lives to look forward to. And I'm not saying that you need to plan a massive vacation or, you know, spend a bunch of money to do X, Y, and Z or anything like that, but just little things. You know, this weekend, Jack and I are going apple picking, for example, and I'm so excited about that. And we're still waiting for our insurance and it's a little nerve wracking, but we're busying ourselves with 
fun things we like to do or going on date night or going out to dinner or going to try a new craft beer that just came out from our favorite brewery. Like there are so many little things that you can do to still have a zest for life while doing these other things. So make sure to create those things. Create those things that will have you looking forward to something or spice up your life a little bit because that definitely helps. So this question I got asked a number of times, so I'll have it as our last question. But did we genetically test our embryos and why or why not? So I wish that this question was simple to answer and it should be. It should be a simple answer to this question. But when I touched on answering this question before, I didn't realize how many strangers on the internet would care so much and so deeply about what we do with our own embryos. The vast majority of you all are so amazing and so incredibly supportive. And I'm so grateful for that vast majority of you all. And I wish that I could be 100% transparent with every single step of our journey. But when I answered this question in passing previously, I did receive a number of comments and messages that were incredibly harmful to me, telling me about their opinions on my own decisions with my own embryos embryos, basically telling me to reconsider my own decision because they went this way and they're pregnant. So clearly that is the only right choice to make in this journey when it comes to genetically testing their embryos. It's one thing to share with each other the journey that we're on or the decisions that we're making or something that might be difficult for us in the comments and in the messages because that's why we're here is to share with each other and make each other feel less alone, but it's another when a comment or a message has a opinion attached to it or a should attached to it. And I think that we all know what that difference is. Something that we did not expect going into IVF with no experience with IVF is how many decisions we were going to have to make. And some were super quick and easy for us to make, but this one in particular was very difficult for me to come to a decision on. There were multiple conversations with my doctor to go over statistical evidence and research findings, multiple sleepless nights on my part, which would turn into sleepless nights on Jack's part when he was trying to comfort me at four o'clock in the morning. And then even more phone calls with my nurse just to go over my thoughts and emotions having to do with this decision. So to come to a difficult decision and ultimately feel good about the decision that we landed on only to read that that is not the right decision and that I should reconsider because X, Y, and Z and what their doctor said and blah, blah, blah. I know you all do understand, but I'm going to have to guard my heart on this one. But if you're asking this question because you yourself are at that crossroads where you need to make this difficult decision, just know that there is not a one size fits all. Because if there was a one size fits all, this decision would be very easy. Just because Susie over here genetically tested or did not genetically test and she fell pregnant does not in any way, shape or form reflect onto you, onto your decision or onto your journey. But with that, my friends, I would love to thank you all so much for watching. If you wanna participate in future Q and A's or you're just wondering what I'm up to on my daily life, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. And again, if this is the first time that you're stumbling across my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button because we are gearing up for a transfer and I would love to have you all along. Everybody do not forget to give this video a big old thumbs up and I will catch you in the next video, my friends. Oh God, ow, <laughs> we'll see you later, bye.